<laughs> a lot of a lot of people talk shit about old school rappers that was dressing like Parliament Funkadelic. But did y'all ever get into that? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> you know, we did. Knock it off. All right. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. Basically, we had an excuse. Uh, punk rock rap. Uh, the song we did in '82, punk rock rap. We were trying to kind of bridge the energy between the punk rap movement that was going on downtown, um, in the clubs downtown, with the hip hop that was going on up here. I mean, so, that's what Bam and them was trying to do. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So um, that's how punk rock rap came about. I was disappointed in, in Planet Rock when it first came out too. I got to be honest with you. I don't as know how you as felt. As a song, I was too, but but just as a joint, right? It was crazy, right? Oh, it was crazy. Like, but but again, I'm used to hearing. A yes, yes, y'all. To the beach, y'all. Like, 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 like. I was listening to Zulu Nation tapes. You know what I mean? I know what 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 Mr. Big and Pow Wow and all these niggas sound like <laughs> on old tapes. You see. And so now when they came with that whole style like that, I was just <laughs> like, I'm just, you know, to me, the best part was at the end when it was like, when it had the break, it was like, gotta rock and don't stop. And they had that little break at the very end that they never let the record play long enough to even hear that anymore. But you got to say, when, when we started making records, man, this was like records is something else. You know what I mean? Now the best thing and, and is to just do whatever the fuck you do live when you go in, in into the studio. But to us, it was a different world. You know what I mean, it's like okay, now this ain't this ain't this. This a record now. Right. So now you got to do something different. That's what right. So, right. right. Exactly. And, and, and it was that kind of environment, and it wasn't the kind of environment that bred creativity. Uh, that brought out your creativity. It, it was an environment that was like, um, um, well, 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 this is what people will will groove to. This is what people like, or this is what you know what I mean. This is you need a theme. You need to instead of just going out, and just being who the fuck we are. Um, See, it was so new that y'all didn't know. Like, like y'all couldn't say there was no frame of reference where you could say, well, well, listen, Run DMC, fucking sampled the record and did this and blah 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 and they yeah. wore their regular clothes and look these motherfuckers you know what i mean blew the fuck up now they're the hottest things since sliced bread um there wasn't nothing like that you could point to you understand what i'm saying so when these motherfuckers is telling you this shit and you're new to the game you almost gotta listen to the shit like like i guess you're right i mean all i know about is making tapes and shit and, and doing parties like this is we making records now, and, and y'all is the experts at this shit. Yeah, and we didn't have, like we didn't have good guidance. You know, what I mean, if we would have got somebody, um, you know, you know, I cast like uh, bring a group like New Edition together and, and teach them what to do and polish them and right. This, you know, what I mean, that type. By the time they come out, these niggas, you know, what I mean, we we didn't have none of that. Um, but but back to the wardrobe part of it. Um, we started dressing that way partly because of the punk rock rap thing and partly because of the Furious Five, who were like the most influential, you know, hip hop group among in hip hop. And when they started going on tour and then coming back, they had a whole, you know, rock star kind of look and persona because they had been out on tour with like Cameo and the Bar K's and, mm -hmm. and all of them, them guys. So they see what real rock stars look like. They see what entertainers out, you know, who who do real shows in arenas and shit like that look yeah, like. Coming back with spike belts and boots. Exactly. So they come back with that rock star shit. You know what I mean? And it was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So but we, not to cut you off, but when you were left to your own devices before all of that, when it was just the tapes. Think about the shit that y'all was wearing. What y'all chose to wear. Y'all chose to wear some gangster shit. Well, I was, I was always going to put fly guy shit, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm never, it's never an accident when you see me dressed. You know what I mean? And 
I tried to I tried to incorporate that with the group, but you can't give nobody personal style. But you know what I mean. But you can give the group a, a, a look. You know what I mean, a uniform look. Yes. So we thought we felt like that gangster persona, um, was the persona we were bringing to the table uh, as far as the battle was concerned, because they were the pretty boys. Now, was those fake guns y'all holding, or was those? Yeah, yeah, those are fake guns. Okay. Those yeah. See, because back then you we wasn't sure. You wanted to believe that they were. You wanted to believe that they were real, though. I wanted them to be real, kind of like you know what I mean. Like, yo, that the cold crush these niggas be having Tommy guns and all kind of shit. Like, I'm trying to brush your bubble, but 